J Mov with J Mov Pickup. Today we are going to talk about stripper game. Okay, so the reason why you should want to bang strippers is because they're usually very hot, right? The strip clubs are not hiring ugly chicks, they're not hiring fat chicks. I mean, once in a while you have a fat chick at a strip club, but it's mostly like really hot, stunning girls, right? And the cool thing is, is you can go into a strip club at any time of the day, any time of the night, and pick up these girls and fuck them and bring them onto your rotation. So it's, strip clubs are kind of like, like I have so many friends that are like, oh, I would never go to a strip club or I don't like strip clubs because I don't want to pay girls to pretend to like me, okay? This is the guy's typical mindset about going to a strip club. It's actually bullshit because you can fuck these girls if you do it properly. And I've had sex with about, I, I didn't keep the exact track, but it's like at least 25 different strippers out of the 735 total now. So, um, and what's cool is a lot of them are like very sexually liberated, like really chill, down to earth chicks. Um, a lot of them have like childhood issues and shit, but again, they're hot chicks, they're cool chicks. So I made a list here. I, I have this in my mind, but I want to like kind of do it systematically. Um, when I teach my seven day live programs, I always have a night or an afternoon devoted to a stripper game. And we take the student to a stripper and to date out of all the students who have taken my seven day programs, they've always taken home a stripper uh, during this program. So. The number one overarching rule is you want to stay out of the customer frame. So what this means, I use like a color analogy. Like say you're a stripper and you see all these dudes at the strip club and they're just kind of labeling them as like, okay, let's just use red color, right? So that red color means like loser, like low value um, customer who's just there to like pay her to like look at her and pay her to like have her like rub her ass on your dick and shit like in a lap dance, right? You want to break out of that customer frame and become like a blue color. So you stand out. You want to become the exception to what she's used to seeing and dealing with on a daily basis, okay? So number one rule, stay out of the customer frame. And I'll explain more about what that means, okay? So you want to break that customer frame. That's the first point here. And you don't have to do these things in order. These are, this is just kind of like a checklist of like, if you do the, all these things or most of these things, like your odds of fucking the stripper are high, okay? Or like you have decent probability given whatever obstacles might be in the way. So one of the ways that I, I typically break the customer frame very early on is like, okay, so their programming, the stripper's programming is like, get you to a paid dance as fast as possible. So like a really skilled stripper, she's gonna come in and be like, hey, wanna go for a dance? Like right off the bat. And like some percentage of guys are gonna either gonna have a lot of money and they don't care, they don't value money, so they're just gonna go instantly because there's a hot naked girl in front of them. Or they're like, you know, so overwhelmed by this like these fucking tits in their face and like this nice ass and all this shit, they're just like, Oh yeah, let's go. Or maybe they're too drunk and they're like, Oh yeah, I'm having a good time, let's go, right? Or they're celebrating an event like a birthday or a bachelor party or whatever, and they go. So why would she spend time talking to you if, if she can get a bunch of them right off the bat? So she's going to try a lot of times right off the bat. Hey, want to go for a dance? If the guy isn't ready, then she's going to start giving him false compliments, right? So she's going to start showing like pretend interest. So she's going to be like, wow, you're really cute. Sit on his lap like, damn, you're like really sexy. And this is most of the time bullshit, right? She's just executing her program because the odds of the man going to get a dance with her are going to go up once he thinks that this girl like really likes him and thinks he's really sexy and all this shit, right? She's like, oh, the guy's like, wow, this naked girl thinks I'm really cool and thinks I'm really handsome. I'm gonna go get a dance with her, right? It's bullshit. Then if that doesn't work, she's gonna start like, you know, asking, like pretend getting to know you. So she's gonna like ask about where you're from and you know, what do you like to do and other bullshit. And then she's gonna ask you for a dance again. And at some point, usually, if, especially if she's like skilled and like a veteran at this shit, she's going to put you to like a decision where she's like, so do you want to get a dance or what? Like, she's going to try to like, because she wants to identify those go those guys that are like broke and that have no intention of getting a dance because why would she sit and talk to you for 30 minutes or 60 minutes if you have no money or if you have zero intention of getting a dance? She wants to determine that relatively quickly. So that's basically the strippers program and that's, that's the kind of the game and the the script she's gonna be executing on you. 
So lots of times when they come in, they sit next to me, they sit in my lap, and they're like, hey, what's your name? Right? I break out of that customer frame. I'll look at them right in the eyes and I'll be like, who gives a fuck? Right? And like, that's not the, the answer that they're used to because, again, what, what are most guys doing? Oh, hi, I'm John. Like, starstruck, right? Like, oh, there's a naked girl on my lap. Like, I'm just like hypnotized, right? No, who gives a shit? Um, and the first time you go to a strip club you've never been, like, it's going to be a little intimidating, especially if you're not used to fucking hot chicks. You're going to have like, a really hot chick with her fucking tits in your face. She's gonna be like rubbing your leg, maybe rubbing your dick over your jeans. Like she's gonna be like shoving her ass in your face with her thong and all that shit, rubbing your chest. Like you have to like deal with all that shit and like hold your composure and not and not just like melt because again you're not you're not trying to act like the rest of the customers. What is a typical customer doing? Oh oh yeah, like just answering her questions, like totally mesmerized, like telling her she's so beautiful, telling her she's so amazing, um, staring at her, like blatantly looking at her tits, blatantly looking at her ass. Like, yeah, like when there's a stripper on me, I'm like, I'm like looking at her fucking body and shit, obviously, but I'm not like, oh yeah, like, you know, it, it's more just like, yeah, like I'm like in control and I'm, I'm looking at that shit, but in a way that's like, you know, I'm like a high value dude, I'm gonna fuck you. Not in a way that's like, I'm a low value customer and I'm just like staring at your boobs because I want to make the most of this opportunity of them being in my face. <laughs> All right, so um, moving on to like how to deal with this shit. Here's like the checklist of stuff that you're going to want to do, right? So keep in mind, number one, break the customer frame. You're going to want to be doing that at all times. Whenever she's trying to like put you in that frame where she's trying to like execute the program and like um, ask you these show fake interests or like execute these fake series of questions. Um, or whatever you kind of want to like break that and go back to your program I'm gonna explain what your program is also if, if she ever brings up like do you want to get a dance never say no because that's like if you were to like say to a girl at a club like so are we gonna is there a possibility that we're gonna fuck tonight and she's like no you would just leave instantly like you your whole goal is to bang her so like she's like yeah like not in a million years will I bang you or like I have a boyfriend like and he's here like we're not gonna bang you're gonna leave leave instantly so like if the girl's like hey can we go get a dance you're not gonna be like no I will never get a dance tonight you kind of want to make it ambiguous and you want to say like um not yet I want to talk to you for a minute or like let me finish this drink first you want to like, kind of like buy yourself a little bit of time to execute these other checklist items but if you tell the girl no I'm not getting a dance like or no I didn't bring any money tonight or some shit like that or you or another way other ways come off as like cheap or, or whatever she's gonna leave okay so you don't want to do that if she's hard gold digging like say she's like want to get a dance and you're like oh no like let me finish the beer she's like no let's get a dance and you're like oh let's just talk for a minute and she's like no let's get a dance like they're like some of them will just like hard like gold dig like they won't even interact with you unless you're getting a dance so you don't even really want to try to go through the checklist with these girls but that's just a small subset all right so here's the checklist Number one, keep out of the customer frame. Number two, you want to cement yourself as industry. So the way I, what I mean by that is like, um, I talked about this in another, another video with hired guns. You want to be like in the in crowd. You want to be like a DJ. You want to be a promoter. You want to be someone who throws parties. You want to be someone who owns a company. You need some kind of in so that you're like in the industry crowd, right? Like she's working for money, for tips. She's a beautiful girl hired for that purpose. You want to be some kind of guy in that in that world right so the way I do it because I used to be a DJ but I have lots of my clients uh, just say that they're a DJ because it doesn't fucking matter she's not like show me like proof that you have DJ events or show me proof that you've recorded mixes no that never like very, very once in a while like they'll really press to, to like hear a mix or something but it's like almost never so I'm like yeah like I DJ in the city right it makes you part of the in crowd it puts you closer to the blue color and takes you further away from the red color. Okay, I'm just checking the time because I don't want to like make this video too long. Okay, um, so it helps move you out of the customer frame. Next checklist item, um, I tell a story about how strippers are my favorite type to date. Um, so I'm like, yo, like, so she's sitting on my lap, I'm like, yeah, like I lived in Vegas, I, did, I lived in Miami, I lived in LA as a DJ. I dated a lot of strippers, like they're my favorite type of girl to date because they're like, really chill, they're down to earth. Um, you're not like bragging about it, but what it's doing is making them more comfortable with like seeing you on a sexual level and like seeing you like as not a customer. Cause 
other strippers have approved of you. Like strippers aren't gonna like fuck guys they think are like loser customers. So what this is doing is kind of like shortcutting and, and bypassing um, her needing to approve of you as a high value man because other strippers have approved of you, right? So it's like a it's like stripper pre-selection. Um, and it's also like a demonstration of value and social proof because you've dated multiple hot strippers, right? So I can tell you just because I've dated lots of strippers, I know lots of strippers that they're one of their number one pet peeves and like complaints is that guys get too jealous of their profession. So like guys they date are like, they can't handle the fact that their girl is like grinding on dudes and like flirting with dudes for money and all that shit, right? So I relate to them and I say, I'm like, listen, as a DJ, I meet tons of like really pretty girls and I don't like the girls that I'm dating getting really overprotective and being bothered by my profession. Um, I'm like, I'm sure you can relate, right? And they're like, oh my God, like, thank you. Like, so you're like kind of like bonding with them over the fact that as a DJ, you have lots of hot girls that, that like you and you get all this attention, but you still like want to be like loyal and faithful to, or whatever to the girls you're dating. And by the same token, she's having to give out all this interest and physicality and, and lap dancing and all this shit for money in her profession, but she doesn't want the dudes that she's seeing on a sexual level to be jealous and overprotective about it. So it's kind of like hitting on their number one problem and relating to it, right? So it like connects you, brings you closer to the blue color. The next thing is you want to lead the conversation. And again, these are not in order, but just keep these in mind. You want to lead the conversation and you don't want to let her execute her canned scripts. So when she's like, so like we should go for a dance, you're like, yeah, yeah, let me just finish the drink. Anyways, I was DJing this party last week. And so you want to control the conversation. You want to control what's going on. You want to cut her conversational threads that are part of her like, pre-can programming that she's saying over and over and over to each guy, right? You Because what is that doing? That's bringing you closer to the red color, right? You don't want to be in that customer frame. She's trying to pull you into fucking target war, right? She initially places you as that red color and your job is to bring your, bring yourself as close as possible to the blue color and she's going to keep trying to like bring you back into her frame. But as you do these things on my, on my list here, like you're going to get way closer to the blue and she's going to stop executing those strips. Scripts. <laughs> I said strips. And she's going to honestly consider you as a sexual prospect and you know, you're gonna get closer to fucking her. Okay, so the next thing is, um, I already covered this before, never say that you will not get a private dance. Okay, always make it ambiguous or say you'll get one soon. Cut the thread, change the topic. Okay, if you make it clear that you will never get a dance or that you brought no money, it's gonna blow out the interaction. It's gonna end, end the set, okay? Um, you also wanna set sexual frames with this girl, right? You don't want to, it's good to, you're cementing yourself as a DJ and that, that you have value and all that stuff, but you don't want to just be like her friend, her industry friend, right? So you also want to like set sexual frames, but you don't want to do it the way that the customers are doing it. So like a typical customer, when the chick's sitting on his lap, he's like, like, oh my God, like, how did you get this beautiful? Like that kind of shit, right? That's not setting a sexual frame. Um, the way I'll do it, so this is my lap and they have fake tits or some shit. I'll be like, damn, like how much did you pay for your tits? She's like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, they look really good. Like, did you get like under the muscle silicone or like, oh, I had an ex that she was like a bikini model and she had like, you know, um, under the muscle, like high profile silicone, like 450 cc's and like, I can like describe like what kind of boob job they have, but you don't, it, it's not necessary to have like <laughs> technical knowledge about boob jobs and stuff. I might, another way, like, it's the principle is like, I'm just dictating, like, I'm like describing her body in a very comfortable way and telling her it looks fucking hot, but I'm not doing it in a way that I, that I want something or that I, you know, I'm just kind of like gushing over her and stuff like that. Like an, another example is I might be like, hold up, I haven't even seen your ass yet. Like stand up and let me see your ass. She's like, what? Like, no, just stand up, I want to see your ass. And I turn, oh damn, that's not bad. Anyways, right, see how different that is than like a customer, like just being like, wow. You know, like it's, it's totally different. You're coming from a place that, that's communicating like, I fuck girls like you all the time. And I'm even explicitly saying that. I'm like, yeah, I fucked a bunch. I'm not saying I fucked, but like, I dated a bunch of hot strippers in, in Vegas, Miami and LA. And like, you know, I really like that they're down to earth and I can relate to them and all this shit, right? Doesn't phase you, it's not a big deal. Whereas these customers are just kind of like, like starstruck and like dumbfounded, right? And, and the girls, pick up on that and they immediately dismiss them as, as ever being a high value guy or ever being a sexual um, interest. Um, the next checklist item, 
do not give her attention for her looks or give her compliments about her looks, right? And you, you can do that in a very like sexually flirty way, but you never want to be like, wow, you are so beautiful or like, how did you get this pretty? Or, you know, I'll, you don't want to like say corny shit like that because again, that's what the guys in the red color, the customer firm are doing. Um, another checklist item, you want to act normal, okay? Do not be intimidated by her beauty or the fact that she's naked or like in a thong or like, ha you know, half clothed or whatever. Um, or don't put her on a pedestal either. That's, that's what everyone else is doing. You want to be the exception to the rule. You don't want to be doing what everyone else is doing. That's that's the, the, one of the most important things of how you're going to be able to fuck a stripper, okay? Next, you want to constantly be steering the interaction towards the fact that the two of you are going to be hanging out at a later time. Like, almost never out of those 25, or it might even be more strippers that I fucked, um, almost never did I bring them home that same night from the club. Like, it, it almost never happens because... They're fucking tired. They're they're in heels for like eight hours and shit. They get off at like four in the morning or six in the morning or some shit. Um, every dude is trying to proposition them to meet up after work. It's just really difficult. So you're almost always going to meet at a later time on a date, right? So you want to constantly be steering things towards the fact and towards the frame that the two of you are going to be hanging out at a later time. So I usually frame it uh, somewhat indirect. Like, so I'm like, yeah, I throw parties. Like, we should hang out sometime. Right, and then I get her number, and then over text, I switch to direct. I don't mention like, "Hey, come to this party I'm having." I say, "When are you free for drinks? Like, when are you free to meet up? When are you free to go get food? Whatever." But I'm, I'm getting the number to make it a little pressure, and again, to not be like a customer to say like, "Oh yeah, I throw parties all the time, or I'm gonna be DJing at these clubs. Like, let me invite you sometime." Get the number that way, and then invite her directly for a date. Let's get food when you're free. Let's get drinks when you're free. Let's get coffee. Excuse me. Let's get coffee when you're free. But I'm not like at the club, I'm not like when she's like naked on my lap or in a thong or whatever, I'm not like, we should get coffee sometime, right? You can do that, but it's, it's just, I think it's a lower probability move because again, it's, it's showing like, oh, I, I want to date you or I want to take you on a date. Instead, I'm just this cool dude who's there, like enjoying the time. A lot of times I'll make up an excuse for why I'm there as well. Um, again, to pull myself further out of the customer frame. Whoever I'm with, I'll be like, yeah, it's his birthday. Like he dragged me here. I don't usually come to places like this. Done, right? And it's not like you're you, you're trying to be really apologetic about it, but it shows you're not like just some pervy dude that just came to like stare at tits, right? Or to, or that came to like pay girls to rub their ass on his dick, right? It's it's just pulling you out of that frame more. Um, yeah, that was actually the next item. Make an excuse about why you're there. Um, so I'm, I'm there for a friend's birthday. I don't usually come to places places like this. Keeps you out of the customer frame even further. Um, okay, here's something you're gonna run into. A lot of times when you ask for that number, oh, hey, I wanna invite you for, part for parties, let me grab your number. Some of them will tell you they can't give you their number at work, right? It's just a rule. Like some of the managers are like, you can't give your number to the customers. And, or they might just be saying that, like, to, you know, just to kind of like make it easier for them because they don't like giving their number out a lot of times because they're meeting so many dudes and the dudes are so horny because the fucking chicks are, are naked or almost naked, right? So if she says she can't give her number at work, or she's like another variation of this, she's like, oh, the cameras will like see me like putting my number in your phone, and I'll get in trouble. Um, if she says this, then be like, oh no, I know you can't give your number out because the cameras, because the managers, just write it down on a piece of paper. So like she can go get a piece of receipt paper from the bartender and write it down in pen and bring it back to you. Okay, so that'll solve that problem. A lot of times, if she still says no to that, tell her to say it out loud and memorize it. Okay, and I talked about another video you're going to take that area code and kind of hang that on a peg in your memory. So, and you should know your local area codes. It's usually like two or three different types of area codes. Keep that on a peg in your memory and then repeat the next seven digits in America. It's seven digits after the area code and just repeat that over and over and then take your phone out area code. Okay. Put those seven digits in, show her this is right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, almost done. Let's see. Okay. So, Sometimes I will get that private lap dance um, and I do this here. This is really important. I do this for the purpose of being able to escalate physically, right? So like say the vibe's really good. I got her number. She's agreed to meet out another time. Sometimes I'll just amp up the sexuality um, by going to get a private dance. But I only do, again, you don't want to be a customer. The customer is paying for a dance so he can like feel her ass and her tits and like have her rub her body all over him. That He's paying to like get that from her, right? You don't want to be a customer. So the, the pretense that I get a dance under is I say, like, listen, like, I've taken up a bunch of your time. Like, I know your time is money. Like, you 
could have gotten lap dance with those other guys. And you've been talking to me for like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I've been having chicks sit in my lap at the strip club for like two hours and deny dances from dudes and I'm not giving them any money at all. And they'll spend like two hours because they really like me and they're, they're it's like a, a refreshing experience because I'm like breaking all this shit that they're used to. Like, Think about it, you're just dealing with like this red color day in and day out, day in and day out. This blue that pops up and I'm like, all these checklist items are directing you more and more and more towards that blue. That blue that pops up is like really refreshing to them because they don't get to experience that very often, right? So when it does, like she's like, damn, right? So, so a lot of times she'll deny like dance some other guys or whatever. She doesn't care, she, she's just like enjoying the time with you. So I'll be like, listen, I know I've taken up a bunch of your time um, let me just get a dance to because I feel bad, right? I will only get a dance if I've already got her number and I've already set up the logistics to hang out another time. I'm not just like, okay, like, let me try to advance this by getting a dance. No, it's, it's the only purpose of it is to like enhance the sexual and physical um, connection with this girl after you've already got her number and after she's already agreed to meet up at a later time. And you've set that frame pretty well. So when I go get that dance, I'm like talking dirty to her the whole time. I'm like, we hang out like we're gonna have like fucking crazy sex like it's gonna be awesome and I'm like you know most strip clubs you can rub your hands all over their body and shit and I'm like listen like it's gonna be so hot like what are you gonna do to me and she's like oh I'm gonna like fucking ride your cock oh yeah show me and you got her like by the waist and, and she's like fucking lap dancing you and you're like what else are you gonna do and she's like this and this and what you're doing is kind of like setting like the the frame that the two of you are gonna fuck like it's not you didn't get her number to invite her to a party like you said. You got her number because you want to bang her. And she like picked up on that as you flirted with her, not as a customer, but as a man and as a high value man. Um, you know, so she already knows what's up, but now you are cementing it further and you're kind of like acting out scenarios of how you guys are gonna hook up and shit in the back room. When it's, it costs you 20 bucks, who gives a fuck, right? It's cheaper than a date. After the dance is over, I immediately, I, I always leave, right? So this is like a, a, a like a last, move before you leave the strip club I don't because what I don't want to happen is like we just like talked all dirty and shit I don't want to like now be sitting there at the club and she's doing her job like now she's on some fucking old rich dude or she's on some other dude that's like tipping her as money or whatever and she sees you like oh like, like she sees you looking at her like on this other guy or whatever. say she's sitting on a guy's lap and like you're just looking around and the two of you happen to meet eyes and shit you don't want to be in that situation because that's her fucking job and it, and it all it's also fucking weird like you guys talk about how you're gonna bang and shit and now she's like on a dude on a dude's lap so it just kind of like makes the whole thing like deflated and like superficial because like now it's like here you are alone and, and, she, and she's on like some dude and you're like hey right so I don't want to be in that situation so like I'm getting a number I'm sending logistics I'm going and like amping up all the sexuality talk like future pacing, like setting up how we're gonna framing things to fuck, like when we hang out, and then I'm and then I'm out, right? And that's it. You're done. And you want to do these other things? Make sure you review this video. Do these other things as well. Um, there's two other really quick things to cover. Do not be afraid. Like a lot of them will come sit on your lap, and that's how you will run the interaction. But do not be afraid to like go approach them. Like I want to talk to the hottest ones there. Say there's like 15 girls working, and like one of the girls in the middle of the pack comes to my lap yeah okay like maybe, maybe i'll talk a little bit but i'm gonna go i, I want to talk to like the hottest three the hottest four that are there right and lots of times those girls are like mia because old dudes and rich dudes are just like getting dance after dance and they're like not even around so if you see a really hot one you don't need to be like oh i hope she comes over and talks to me or i hope she walks by so i can stop her no you can literally go approach her like you can call a cold approach you can call it whatever the fuck you want you want to roll up and be like yo um come here i want to talk to you and bring her over to where you're sitting and come have her sit on the, on the lap and then do all these things i told you right but now you have this opportunity with this hot one not by chance because you fucking approached her and made it happen right last thing don't be afraid to like in old school game terminology they call it merging sets um Basically, it's it's like bringing two groups together and introducing them to each other and it, and it doesn't need to be groups It can be like two different strippers So what I mean by this is like don't be afraid to like play them all off each other not not in a way where you're like trying to be like mr. Cool or like, you know, where, where it's like very obvious you're trying to get some kind of reaction But say you have like some stripper sitting in your lap 
and she's like maybe a seven or a seven point five, and there's like a way hotter one that stops by. You can be like, hey, come here. You grab the hotter one. You're like, yeah, this. You point to like the seven or whatever. You're like, yeah, this chick's in love with me. Like, I'm not sure. What should I do? Some some stupid bullshit like that, right? And you're like, hey, do you guys know each other? Uh, but just just the fact that you're like not afraid to like openly flirt with both of them in a in a dominant and commanding way, and you know you can even like go as far as to be like, hey, like let me talk to her real quick, push this one off, and you can even still bang that seven five. Like, that's gonna like create a lot of like jealousy and shit like that. Hey, come sit down. But the but the new one, the new hot one, is gonna be like attracted based on the fact that you were like very dominant and like just told this other one to fuck off basically not in a rude way but just that you're like kind of like in charge and you like told this one come here like sit here and then she's gonna start with her script and you'll be like who gives a fuck what my name is ha 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 and then she's like wow like i met a random fucking blue color guy how refreshing right um so this is how you this is how you game surf clubs and like let all the fucking um, idiots out there that think that you're just paying for fake attraction from these girls, like, so they avoid strip clubs. This is actually like a hidden gold mine. Um, because for one, a lot of times they're open later than the clubs, so you can go do work once the clubs are over. Um, for two, you can go in on any fucking afternoon. Like, they're gonna have like the B roster, like, they're not gonna be as hot in the afternoon. They're gonna have the hottest ones at night and on the weekends and shit. But there's still going to be hot ones there, just not as many on the afternoons. You can just go in any time. Like, I got out of a relationship once, and I, I started going in to this one strip club that was near my house. It was really good. And I ended up banging, like, five strippers from there within, like, maybe three weeks. And it, and they knew I was fucking their friends, and shit, they didn't care. It was just, like, I would go in solo. I would just fucking drink beer and, like, run game on these girls. And... Most of the rest of the guys on the afternoon where we were just like fucking old guys or like low value guys or just giving them tons of money or just giving them tons of compliments. And so like, here's this guy standing out from all the rest of the crowd, you know, regularly coming in. They want to come and talk to me. Like these were the situations where they would sit with me for two hours and ignore guys want to pay them because like, it's like fucking making their, their time better, like interacting with a guy like this than all these red low value customers. So that's pretty much all I have to say about that. So I'm not going to recover all the points again. There's like 14 of them. Stay out of the customer frame. Rewatch the video to hear the rest of the points. And good luck fucking these strippers. And all these strippers actually are by as well. And you can have them bring in their stripper friends for threesomes. You can bring them out to the club and have them pick up ch chicks with you. Um, they'll do all kinds of crazy sexual shit because they're pretty fucking liberated, you know, in order to have a job like a stripper. So, and never be jealous. Like if you start dating them on your rotation, like when I left Vegas, I had like nine girls in rotation, four of them were strippers. And I didn't like ever ask them about their work or, you know, just, just be cool. Like, you know, it's just their fucking job, you know? So you bang, you're like the fucking man that's banging them and they're pretending like these other dudes that are paying them. So it's pretty cool. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Sorry for the length of this video. I'm trying to keep these usually shorter, but lots of good info here. And uh, thanks for watching.